Hey coaches, let's talk about risk taking. Risk taking is a part, an indicator of success with the uh, two competencies in co-creating the relationship. These are creating trust and intimacy and coaching presence. Taking risks is very important in coaching because it, for one, helps the coach step away from the sense of, oh, I got to make things perfect. And it also helps this space of coaching to be safe for the client to take risks as we demonstrate risks and acknowledge when we kind of make a mistake, but only lightly, not focusing on those mistakes, continuing to walk forward in exploration. Risk taking is important, especially as we look at PCC, professional certified coach, and MCC, master certified coach, credentials and those expectations. We need to be willing to take risks. Now, how do you take risks? First off, an interpretive observation. Now, we talk about these a lot in class, how interpretive observations can be a detractor from the coaching experience. If the coach doesn't ask an open handoff question, also if the coach is leveraging interpretation too often, then the focus is more on the coach's interpretation and over time validation of what is right, like the coach is directing to the right interpretation of what's going on in a session. However, when a coach says, I'd like to share something I think I'm seeing here. As you're talking, I have a sense that you really do want to leave your job. Now, that's a very serious interpretation on my side. And I'd like to hear what you have to say about that interpretation. Something like that, although I'm acknowledging that was not the best handoff, it was a handoff. What do you think about that interpretation? You are getting permit, permission or partnership to share. You're always sharing this interpretation and acknowledging that it is your interpretation, then offering it back for the client's take on it. That can be a great way to take risk because an interpretation, I mean, as you heard in that example, can be far off. And we want to make sure to hand it back to them, but that's a risk worth taking sometimes. Another risk worth taking can be a challenge. And a challenge, you use direct communication, very similarly, permission to, to challenge the client. Here's what I need to say. How does that land with you, that handoff question? What do you make of this challenge? What are you taking away from what I just said there? A challenge can be extremely useful when the coach is highlighting a pattern highlighting something that is happening in session that we as coaches, we have this intuition, they're bringing that behavior, they're bringing that pattern, they're bringing that way of speaking into their work or their lives. And we have the sense maybe that's impacting this whole situation we're trying to work on, this relationship with their peer. So let's offer the challenge. Hey, if I could challenge you real quick, the way you responded to me when I asked about the accounts seemed to me a bit harsh or a bit defensive. And so my challenge to you is, what impact is the way you respond to that line of questioning, what impact is that having on the relationship we're trying to work with? Now, this is pretty gutsy. I wouldn't want to do it very often. You want to offer some sort of, um, or you, you want to only offer a challenge when you have a decent amount of rapport with the individual, but sometimes you need to go there as a coach, even if it's uncomfortable because that is coaching. Next, longer silences. I feel like that's all that needs to be said. <laughs> longer silences can feel like taking a huge risk, but it can help the client think. Five, 10, 15 second silences are a part of coaching. We've talked about it before, but it is a note that is played in a coaching session. Next up, simple questions that may not make sense. It's hard to give some examples of these because they're often seated within a metaphor, a line of questioning, some thinking and language from the client. But let's say the client has just mentioned they need to be more creative towards their coworkers in our meetings. And maybe I just ask, so what's on the canvas this week? I don't really know what that question means, 
it's in the realm of creativity, so I'm using the sense of their language, and I don't know what's going to happen. It's a risk to ask that question because it's so open to interpretation that I even do not know what the right type of answer would be to that question. But it's a worthwhile risk sometimes to ask a question that is so open and ambiguous that it makes the client pause more. Next up, to take that sense of metaphor or figurative language, we can introduce some sort of metaphor, figurative language, like an analogy or something like that, into the coaching experience to add to the creativity. Now, most of the time, taking the client's analogy or creativity, I would say all of the time, that's going to be better. But if they aren't introducing a metaphor, then, hey, a risk that might be worth taking is for the coach to introduce that metaphor of the ship, the adventure, the all the <laughs> ones that I keep bringing up in... Um, in our work, in this training, whatever the metaphor might be, uh, to say, hey, for whatever it's worth, I'd like to introduce a metaphor for how I'm hearing the situation between you, your peer, and your manager. So real quick, it, it, to me, the way I'm imagining it is that it's a ship at sea, your captain is your manager, and your peer and you are fighting over who's, who's going to be first mate. At the end of the day, you're still on the ship and you've got a long journey ahead of you. That's the way I'm seeing it. I, I don't know, for whatever it's worth, wanted to play with that metaphor. What do you, what do you make of that metaphor? Don't know if they're, I hate, I hate the ocean. I, I hate, the, like, we don't know what's going to happen, but that's part of risk taking. It's okay if it, if it fails. But the fun thing is when a metaphor is introduced into a challenging conversation, um, a challenging coaching conversation, that metaphor becomes the playground of thought. So now, if they accept that metaphor, then we can play with all the actors and, and, and ideas that can come on a boat, a ship at sea. So we can talk about what's the storm. We can mention uh, who's responsible for the rigging, who's responsible for the navigation, uh, so who's tactical, who's more strategic, what's most important in the first mate. We can play. And I don't know what that play might lead to, but offering a metaphor, it's a risk worth taking sometimes. The next risk worth taking is mentioned in the MCC ideas, um, kind of indicators of success when it comes to offering tools. That if a coach offers a tool, they need to co-create that tool. The tool is not the expert. The, the, in the space of coaching, the evidence-based research and theories that's not even the expert. The client's interpretation of the tool, the evidence-based research, all of this stuff from positive psychology and how that applies to them, their interpretation of those things becomes the expertise. So we need to, as we stronger in our coaching skills, we need to take the risk of introducing a tool and saying, so here's how it would normally work, but we've worked together a lot. I'd love to hear how you might like to leverage this tool in our session today? What would you change about the tool? What would make it most effective for you? And this usually comes with a client who is more competent, more familiar with using tools and sessions. Now, finally, another way of leveraging a more effective uh, risk-taking in a coaching session is to actually co-create questions themselves or lines of questions to say, wow, this is a big challenge. What are three of the questions we need to ask and answer first? What are the biggest questions that we need to work on from here? If I were to ask you the best question in this moment, client, what would that question be? And so on. So you're going to co-create it. Um, or I've got a question on my mind. I have, uh, my intuition, if I could share is saying we should ask about this thing. But to be honest, I'm not sure what question to even ask here. What question would you ask if we went down that path? You have to really trust in the client. We have to trust that they are okay with that struggle, that awkwardness of the coach saying, hey, do my job for me. But that's what a coach does. The coach is always there. I am paid as a coach, to make my client do my job because the job that's being done is solving the problem. 
And that's a messy process that really requires the client's expertise as we flip the model of solving problems on its head and we are there to serve by asking the questions, even what might sound like a dumb question in a business exchange, to help the client grow. Take risks. Take risks. Pick a, a couple from this list and see how you might leverage them in your coaching. See what happens. Just study it a little bit and play. Know that mistakes will be made. But the more likely a coach is, is to, to take those risks and to be okay with what happens, the safer it is for the client to take their own risks.